Hi there, Interghost here and a Happy New Year to everybody, Happy 2024. Now, something I thought I would do on this channel as I'm really getting into reading uh, over the past year. I've gone away from video games for a bit and I'm really getting into reading different novels. So I thought, as I have read quite a few over the past 12 months, I'll just go quickly through all the novels that I've read. I think. 23, 24, something like that, books that I've read uh, this year and I'll just go through and sort of summarise what I think about those books. If you don't like that sort of thing then don't worry, I'll see you in the next video. But I will also hopefully be doing another video like this on my uh, other channel which is Into Ghost House, I'll put a link below, where I'll do the my review on all the movies that I've watched at the cinema because I have the Cineworld World card so I've been going to the cinema quite a lot in the last 12 months as well so if you want to listen to that sort of thing if you head over to my other channel Into Ghost House and I'll be doing a rundown of all the movies I've seen at the cinema in the past 12 months as well if that's something you might enjoy uh, watching. Just before I get onto the books that I uh, finished there is a couple of mentions that I wanted to do. Books that I started but didn't finish. First one was uh, Killing Floor, which is a Jack Reacher book by Lee Charles. Somebody at work told me that the uh, Jack Reacher books were really good. It's basically sort of like a you know special agent, James Bond type character. He's uh, ex-army and I think his brother dies and he's trying to work out who killed him. Really couldn't get uh, into that book. It was just uh, not very well written. It was very sort of predictable. I could see where it's going. It's just taking too long to get there. So I got about halfway through that and I, I stopped reading it. So yeah, not really interested in those in that series. The next one was called Meddling Kids by Edgar Cant Cantro, uh, which looked really cool from the cover and uh, reading the back. It's basically, it's based on Scooby-Doo but they don't actually say it's uh, to do with Scooby-Doo. But it's a group of teenagers with a, uh, a large dog who used to solve crimes with uh, people at like a spooky house and stuff like that. But they've all retired and they've all gone on their own way and they're now adults and they've got different issues like I think one's a drunk, another one's uh, come out of prison. And anyway, there was something that happened on an island when they got a uh, caretaker arrested in the past. So it all sounds pretty cool, but it just took so long to get anywhere. I think I got about three quarters of the way through the book and it really hadn't gone anywhere at all. They focused far too much on the, they try and make a gay relationship between the two female characters, which didn't really need to be in there. So yeah, I gave that one up too. Really good idea, but it just wasn't written very well. And finally, uh, Santa Claus the Movie, the book adaptation. I just thought I'd read this one over the Christmas period. I really liked the uh, film as a kid, but uh, tried to read the book. It gave a little bit more backstory on who the guy was before he turns into uh, Santa. But yeah, it just it was boring, so uh, I gave that one up. So those are the books I didn't complete. Now all the other ones I'm going to list off now and show you are ones I did complete over the 12-month uh, period. Now the first one to kick the year off is a really well-known classic and one I'm really glad I read because it kickstart my uh, love for uh, Stephen King books. I don't know if you can see all these shelves behind me are full of Stephen King books. I've got all of them now. The first one I read was It. I did do a review on this if you want to go and watch it but I'm not going to be doing full reviews on books anymore. Uh, but yeah, Stephen King's It. So basically it's a group of teenagers who uh, see a creature which feeds off their fears and it can change into different things. Uh, in the movie it's portrayed as a clown. It is a clown in uh, the book but it changes into a lots and lots of other different things as well. And then every 27 years this thing comes back to the town and kills more people. And it tends to focus on the children because they're easier to scare. And then in the second half of the book, the kids come back and as adults and have to fight it and try and destroy him. And yeah, so that was a five star read for me and kicked off my love of Stephen King. So the next book I read in January was um, another Stephen King book called Carrie, which is Stephen King's first full novel that he wrote. Yeah, it's quite a thin book. 
I only gave this three stars, three out of five, as the writing wasn't great. It's about a a girl who's sort of going through puberty at school and she's having her period and she's uh, she's bullied. She freaks out over this as well. She's got a really controlling mother who is really sort of um, religious and she says that she, this that her daughter is evil and she knows that she's got these like psychic powers where she can control things with her mind and then basically it's a revenge story after um, being bullied she then goes to this school dance thinking that uh, this guy fancies her and it's just a big uh, trick to get her there and make her look stupid and then she uh, goes on a killing spree and kills everyone in the town uh, quite a good read but like I said three out of five you could tell it's an early book of his and he was just trying to find the ropes of writing and uh, it's sort of like a short story so yeah worth a read then moving on to February we uh, got another Stephen King book Misery and I've reviewed the movie of this on the other channel comparing it to the book now this one was better than Carrie it's a, another old older story by Stephen King and it's about a writer he always writes about a writer um, write what you know he crashes his car in the mountains and then he gets uh, saved by uh, a, a woman who lives up in a um, house out in the middle of nowhere and she is his biggest fan and basically she keeps him locked up in a, a room and she forces him to write a book for her and she's a bit psycho and basically ends up like breaking his ankles and yeah just torturing him really in this room so yeah I gave that one four out of five it's a really good read and uh, it's quite a wintry read as well it's all set in the mountains with the snow and that sort of thing so I'd recommend that one so sticking with uh, Stephen King but this was uh, King's book he brought out under his pseudonym Richard Bachman which he brought out a few books uh, under that name and this one is called The Long Walk now I've heard a lot of people say uh, good things about this book uh, it wasn't one of my favorite ones I only gave this two stars it's quite a good idea but it's just a bit weird really it's set in the not so distant future where you can uh, go on this thing called The Long Walk and it's a bunch of teenage boys and what they do is they start off on the road and they all just have to keep walking for as long as they can and the last one standing will get to win whatever they want to win um, they could choose anything if they fall down or go off the path then they get shot by these soldiers which are following them along the road so yeah it's a bit odd and it's just sort of a book about the characters walking along and talking to each other and their reasoning why they're doing the long walk but I just thought it was just a bit weird why anybody would do this like you know 30 people walking on, along the road knowing that only one's going to survive and the rest are going to get shot so it's okay but just a bit odd so then after that I picked up The Running Man which is another Richard Bachman Stephen King book and as you can see it's got the Arnold Schwarzenegger cover and it's really funny actually well the movie is meant to be based on this book uh, The Running Man movie which is one of my all-time favorite movies but the book is nothing like the movie at all really apart from the names of the characters it is set in the future where uh, the government have set up this sort of like an event where you can try and be pardoned from a crime you've done by doing this thing called a running man where they basically let you off in the city and if you can escape then you're free if not you get killed but in the movie it's a game show so they let you loose in a, like an abandoned city and then they have like um, gladiator type people who hunt you down and they film it all on TV and show it on TV. But on this one it's just li you're literally just running around you know in a normal city with people hunting you down. So yeah it was okay. I gave it three stars. Uh, it's not one of his best ones. Better than The Long Walk but it's, it's short enough to read pretty quickly but I wouldn't recommend it really so we finally got away from Stephen King uh, at the end of February um, this is The Fog by James Herbert another horror writer uh, British horror writer I think and I've read a couple of his books when I was a teenager the Rats series which is his probably most famous books 
Now, The Fog was... Uh, I read this one because my brother was doing a podcast and they were talking about this book, or well, they were going to talk about this book. So I thought I'd read the book before they did it and see what it was like. And I only gave it two stars, two out of five. It's, it's all a bit silly, really. It feels like it's written by a teenager. It's like um, over the top violent and uh, he's he does like sexual kills. He, like people have their private parts bitten off or you know weird stuff like that. And yeah, it's, it's just a bit laughable really. It's about this fog which is man made. It comes out of the ground. But for some reason it has like a mind and it can move around and choose where it wants to go. But it, they don't really explain why. And it floats around killing people uh making them go insane and uh, yeah they sorry they don't kill people they make people go crazy and then people kill other people so yeah by the end i was just sort of skim reading it couldn't be bothered to really finish it properly and it got to the end and i was just like oh, yeah whatever so yeah i wouldn't really recommend it so after reading the fog i went back to stephen king uh thinking you know i'm on to a good thing here and I read probably one of his best books I've read so far. Uh, this was at the beginning of March, and it is Under the Dome, which is one of his uh, bigger books. It's, uh, it's like 800 pages, something like that. But like I said, it's one of my favorite Stephen King books now. I gave this five out of five. It's basically, it's a town which, for some reason, a big invisible force field is called a dome under the dome but it isn't a dome it's just sort of it goes around the edge of the town uh, nothing can fly through it nothing can go under it and this town is sectioned off from the rest of the world and it shows how quickly the authority figures who are corrupt in the town take over and start treating all the rest of the uh, residents uh, really badly it's got one of the best sort of villains in it he's the mayor of the town no one of the I can't remember now, like one of the chairman of the, the board in the town and he runs like the police and that sort of thing and uh, a lot of people say the ending's crap on this one I would say the end does go a bit weird uh, the reason to why the dome is there but again I'm I was sort of thinking well it's very hard to finish this story because how are you going to explain away that there's a big uh, invisible dome trapping people into a town so the ending, I wasn't too um, worried about how he ended the book. Uh, I couldn't really think of a better way he could have done it. Uh, but the characters in this story are really good. And it's more about, you know, the different groups of characters and how they interact with each other. And the dome is just sort of like a side story to that and giving them a reason to be confined and uh, to interact and there's no sort of outside people who can come in and save anybody so yeah I'd highly recommend this book it's a big book but um, it's a page turner and I really enjoyed it that one took the most of the month of March so in April I read uh, another Stephen King book sorry um, but it was Cujo and uh, this is quite a famous book it's quite a short one well medium and it's one of his older books again and this one is about uh, a dog a saint bernard dog who gets rabies and starts killing people uh, again out in the middle of like this sort of farm yard areas it's a guy who runs a mechanic uh, out in the middle of this countryside and somebody drives a car out there to get fixed and then she gets trapped in the car and the dog is trying to get in and kill her and her young child i gave it a four out of five i did a reaction on my other channel of how the book compares to the movie if you want to go and check that one out but yeah it's it was very suspenseful i think it was a little bit slow building up to the end but the end is really good i find that with a lot of stephen king books i think they he is very good at doing characters and building up a backstory to everyone but i think sometimes he goes a little bit over the top and you just thinking come on get get to the action get to the the meat of the story because um i want to know what happens and the actual horror side of the story doesn't really happen until the last sort of quarter of the book uh so yeah i'd still recommend reading that one and it's uh, one of his, his better stories so i went completely different with the next book and this is a book which i saw uh, growing up as a as a kid 
and it's The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, aged 13 and 3 quarters by Sue Townsend. Now, if you live in the UK you, uh, and you're my sort of age, you've probably heard of this one before. There was a TV show about Adrian Mole which was really popular and my brother and I think my mum, maybe my sister, all had this book or read this book when I grew up, uh, but I never actually read it, even though I'd seen the cover thousands of times. I watched the TV program, I really liked the TV program, and after I read the book I went back and watched that. And I actually read through this and it is a proper time capsule of like the 90s. I gave it four, four stars, four out of five. It's really funny, it just captures what it was like as a kid growing up with not much money, no internet, sort of your crushes at school and how kids used to treat each other and uh, yeah it's really good read I'd recommend it especially if you're sort of in your 30s 40s uh, I think you'll really enjoy this and you can see some of the ways people used to interact back in the day um, really good book so in May we took a trip back to Stephen King <laughs> you see a bit of a pattern here I did go away from him a bit uh, in the later part of the year but uh, so we got Pet Cemetery, which is one of his most probably well-known and talked about books. This is the book where everybody who's read Stephen King all, always say uh, this is one of his like most horrific books and it's um, really hard to read through to the end because it's so hard-hitting and disturbing. And I think this is the reason why I didn't enjoy it quite as much as I would have if I didn't go in with that sort of high expectation. I think I set my expectation right up here. It's still a good book. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars so you know it's still well worth a read. Uh, but it does, it deals with uh, death in the family and how people grieve and how people do anything to get their loved ones back. So basically there's a pet cemetery up in the woods and the, he, the guy moves into this new house, he's a writer again and he finds out from the locals that the kids all go and bury their animals up in this pet cemetery but then when his cat dies he doesn't want his young daughter I think it is, or his son to find out that the cat's dead and the neighbour tells him if you go up to this pet cemetery and bury the cat in a certain place then it will come back again and he goes and does that and the cat comes back alive uh, but it's not quite the same it acts really weird it smells really weird and um, yeah there's something weird about this cat once they bring it back alive and then it goes through and about three quarters of the book sort of again character building and it's sort of you can see what's going to happen you can see that a child is going to die basically and he's going to have to make that decision if he leaves the child dead or if grief overtakes him and he takes the kid to the pet cemetery and try to bring the kid back alive which you can probably tell that's what he decides to do so i won't ruin the ending the ending is really good and it is quite sort of very dark and uh, disturbing story but yeah i think my expectations were far too high when i read it I'll probably reread this at some point and uh, I'll probably enjoy it a lot more. But yeah, it's well worth a read and if you've got young children, it is a quite hard hitting story. So to end off the month of May, uh, I read, well, I read the end of A Feast for Crows, which is a George R.R. R. Martin book, which is in the Game of Thrones um, story. And there's this, The Song of Ice and Fire, sorry, that's the name of the series. The Game of Thrones is the first book. And uh, this is the, it's the fourth book, but it's really the fifth book because the third one is split into two because it's so big. But anyway, uh, this is one of the um, Songs of Ice and Fire books. And I started reading this probably like two or three years ago and I got about halfway through it and uh, it's just been sat in my bedroom waiting to be finished. And after I read all those books at the start of the year, I thought, right, I'm going to finish off some of the books that I'm part way through before starting a new book and I thought right get back into this one get this finished off so I can continue reading the rest of the series and I'm glad I did all the ice and fire books are really really good this was a five star book all of them have been five star up to now some people get put off by the length of these books because they are huge chunky books but I would say one of the best reads 
you you can get you don't have to be into fantasy it's very sort of character driven it's very in-depth into the families and how they interact with each other and it's more of like a drama book than a fantasy book uh the only thing i'd say is the downside on this book is uh it felt like it split into two again so there's this one and then the next one uh because as i was reading this i i was thinking uh there's a lot of characters which are missing a lot of the main characters it doesn't get mentioned at all throughout this whole book and i thought well, why aren't you mentioning all these main people um like john snow for example one of the biggest characters in the book is not in here and you get right to the end you finish the book and then there's like a, a note from george R. R. martin saying you might have um, noticed that a lot of the characters aren't in this book and that's because it was just getting too long to include all of them so what he's done is he's written this about a lot of the characters in the story and then the next book will be what all the other characters were doing at the same time as what when this was happening so the next book is set in the same timeline at the same time as what's happening in this book so it's sort of like they're running alongside each other so I'm interested to read the next one because the next one has a lot of the characters which I enjoy a lot more than this one if that makes any sense I feel like I'm rambling but um, a very very good book and uh, if they had included all the characters it would have been twice as thick and I don't think anybody would read a book which is what is it this is almost 900 pages so you're not gonna have an 1800 page book it'd be ridiculous but I would highly highly recommend reading the ice and fire books give the first one a go and you'll be hooked so as we go into June I picked up a book by a author called Dean Kuntz now Dean Kuntz is somebody who's if you read about Stephen King, Dean Koontz always gets a mention that people think that he was trying to copy Stephen King. He's another horror thriller writer who churns out loads and loads of books. I think he's done sort of 50 odd books, um, a bit like Stephen King. And he just, he just, you know, churns them out. And he, again, is meant to be a really good writer. So I thought, right, I'm gonna give him a go. So I looked up what books were recommended and the Frankenstein series of books um, was quoted as some of his best books that he's done. And so I picked up this one. This is the first Frankenstein novel called The Prodigal Son. And I gave it five stars, five out of five. And as you'll see um, in the next few books coming up, I read a lot of Dean Kuhn's books this year as well. And I kind of think that I enjoy reading his books more than Stephen King. I don't know if I'd say he's a better writer, maybe, uh, but they're more enjoyable, they're more fun, there's more humour to them, and the characters feel more alive, not so sort of in depth or troubled. <laughs> like in the Stephen King books, they, they all seem to have something wrong with them, whereas in Dean Koontz books, they feel more sort of like normal, average people. Now, this one is a sort of take on the, fra the old Frankenstein story by Mary Shelley and it's basically set in nowadays but uh, Frankenstein is actually a real thing that happened and Mary Shelley wrote a story based on these real things which, which happened uh, years in the past and so it's sort of like she's taken a real life thing and made it into a fantasy book but what actually happened is the Frankenstein monster has lived on. The Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein, has did try to kill him, but didn't. Uh, he thinks that he's dead, but he's not. The Dr. Frankenstein has, has changed his name. He's still living in nowadays because he's um, found a way to keep his body going and keep himself alive. But this, uh, the monster has come back and it starts off as like a monk in Tibet, but then he comes back into like modern day, like city, um, setting and it's all about the doctor he's creating a new breed of humans which to replace real humans uh, it seems a bit weird but it, it's a very good read I think I gave it a yeah five out of five it's just really good there's two characters in it the two police officers there's um I can't remember their names there now but there's a male and a female and they really do um, play off each other really well and have good sort of banter in it and uh 
I'd highly recommend reading that one. The cover almost put me off reading it because it looks crap, but it's a really, really good book. Now, after reading that one, I was recommended by somebody at work to read uh, Wilbur Smith. And uh, the first book in that he ever wrote was When the Lion Feeds. And now, this is a guy who writes sort of dramas set in historical times. And he does a lot of sort of things around like um, he's he's South African so it's it's based in Africa and it's about a family um, called the Courtney family and how they are they're sort of like a rich family but then he goes off to become a gold miner and shows you how he builds up like the gold mine industry uh, his rise and fall to power basically and things going on with his wife and his brother his brother goes off the war uh, it's, it's all like that it, it's quite a sort of, um, even though it's not real, it feels historical. And yeah, I thought it was all right. I gave it three out of five. It's probably not the type of book I would read. I've got, I picked up a few more of his books. I might try some more of them. As I said, this is his first uh, he ever wrote. So they might get better as they go along. Uh, it wasn't bad. It was quite a good read, but it just felt very, his way of writing is like every chapter was like something good happens. Next chapter, something bad happens. Next chapter, something good, something bad, something good, something bad. And it just did that through the whole book. So every time something good happens, it's like, all right, next chapter is going to be bad. Okay, next chapter is going to be good. And it just felt like that all the way through the book. And it just got very predictable by the end. It's like, okay, I can see how this is going to go. So hopefully he doesn't continue writing like that. But um, I will probably give, a, another, give him another go. Then to finish off June, we did another Stephen King book and it's called The Gunslinger which is part of the Dark Towers series which is a, I think he's done about six or seven Dark Towers books now this was a story Stephen King said that he wrote and it took him it's taken him most of his career to write this book apparently it's like his, his big book big series he wanted to make now this one is really thin it took him like six years to write considering he like knocked out books all over the place he took ages to write this i think that he just took ages because he wasn't happy with the way this book was going and to me it's just very very weird it's just about this guy walking through a desert trying to get to this tower and not much happens and he meets up with a couple of people along the way somebody in like an abandoned shed somewhere and then they go up into this tower he's trying to follow he's trying to catch up with this person who you don't really know who he is and it just feels a bit odd i'm hoping that the next few books get better because some of the other um dark tower books are like real big thick books um and if they don't get better after the second one i ain't going to read the rest of them uh, i only gave this one two out of five stars so i'm glad that i've read it just to see what it was like i'm glad it was a very thin book and quick to read um so watch this space so we move into july and i went and picked up the second book in the in the frankenstein series again look at that cover rubbish um it's called the city of night and it continues straight on from where the first book left off and that was one of the things which annoyed me actually in the first book that it sort of left you on a cliffhanger it felt like it, the story hadn't finished it just sort of left you hanging and this one goes straight into where the last one left off this one i gave five out of five again although it's probably like four and a half five it wasn't quite as good as the first one but still really really enjoyed this one it sort of concentrated a lot more on the doctor in his lab sort of uh talking about how he's making this new race of people and how they've infiltrated the government and all this sort of thing so that was a little bit boring and he's also it went sort of very heavy into his uh he's created his own wife uh called erica who he's trying to like perfect this perfect woman and uh they always sort of rebel against him and he has to end up killing them off and then making another one with the same memories but fixing what went wrong before so it sort of concentrates a bit more on that and not so much on the so what's going on with the investigation into what's happening uh, but they've still got the two uh, police officers in it which are really cool uh, who are finding out more and more what's happening but they haven't got help of other people because they don't know who they can trust who's the new race and who isn't 
and if it's like infiltrated the police and that sort of thing so yeah very good book again joins on to the other one so if you read the first one and you liked it you'll really enjoy this one as well so then after the success of the first adrian mole book i read the next one which is the growing pains of adrian mole wasn't quite as good as the last one it's more of the same really i gave it three out of five uh it just again it follows on the same sort of pattern as the last one but it just obviously he feels a bit more grown up he's a bit less naive but it goes more into his sort of uh, ongoing relationship with his girlfriend and they're sort of on and off um it shows more of what's happening in like the 90s with uh, the political scene and that sort of stuff i think in this one it's more about his because in the first one his mum and dad are having an affair with different people and then this one they've split up and he's got like two homes he goes to so his dad with his new girlfriend and his mum with her new boyfriend and um i think they both get pregnant and you know all the stuff going on around there so yeah still a really good read i would highly recommend it just not quite as good as the first one but i will be reading the others there's again there's about six of these books so then i went on to another dean Koontz book i didn't read the next uh frankenstein one i started reading this one which is another highly recommended series of his called odd thomas um there's a few odd thomas books i think there's again five or six of them i hear that they, they're not as good as they go along but this one's really good so i gave this one a try and this is one of my favorite books now um i gave it five out of five really interesting concept it's it's a guy who uh has sort of psychic abilities he can talk to dead people he talks to people who haven't passed on and if they've still got something they feel like they need to do in on earth like a lost soul they won't leave until that thing has happened and he can talk to these people and he can help them move on to the to wherever they go but also he sees these sort of dark creatures which uh, they don't really explain too much what they are but they sort of hang around where something bad is going to happen or they follow around certain people when something evil is going to happen he notices this one guy uh who's completely swarmed and surrounded by these dark creatures and they follow him around wherever they go so he gets sort of interested in what's going on there so he follows this guy back to his house and then he goes into the house and he finds out that he's this sort of serial killer um real nasty sort of like satanic type person yeah it goes on that journey i don't really want to go into what happens at the end but also there's again with Dean Coons he puts some humor in there there's some uh, real sort of funny bits in there he actually sees um the ghost of Elvis Presley he keeps popping up in this book which is you know a bit odd and out there but again it it makes it for makes for a funny read and also this is one of the books where there was a bit at the end which sort of threw me and I didn't see it coming and I won't ruin it but again yeah so there's a there's sort of like not a twist but there's a, a bit at the end which I thought really did a really good job of uh, finishing off the story so I'd highly highly recommend that uh, obviously a five out of five book after that uh, I actually picked up a whole bulk lot I think it was on Facebook marketplace of Agatha Christie books and I picked these up because I really like those I like the uh, old covers on there um, I think these were written in like I don't think this is in the 40s but I think they were originally written in the 40s um, everyone's heard of her she does some really famous uh, murder mystery stories like murder on the orient express and death on the nile uh, and this is her first ever uh, published book and it was the mysterious affair at styles I read this one uh, read it pretty quick it was uh, not too bad I gave it a three out of five stars it is a little bit dated obviously written in the 40s so i had to give it a little bit of leeway because you know the, the style of writing in the olden days to now it's much more of a slower pace it's just a different period of time but the beginning and the end were a little bit slow the bit in the middle was really good where he where um hercule pryro turns up the detective when he's actually doing his sort of like detective work around the house figuring out how these people got into a locked room and killed this person and who was the person who who'd done the murder that was really interesting there was a little bit at the end which they go into like a courtroom 
drama type thing which was really quite boring i would definitely give agatha christie another try in the future i've got a whole pile of her books now to read so i will read the next one and see how those go now the next one i read was uh, quite a, a short story it's more of a children's story this is caverns of the snow witch by ian livingstone these are sort of choose your own adventure books where you sort of read the read the pages and then you can make, make a decision what you want your character to do next so I've got a whole collection of these I used to collect these as a kid and they're just really good fun fantasy stories and as a kid it was really good to be able to choose how your adventure went now I gave this one a three out of five stars it's not one of their best ones but if you want a little bit of nostalgia and you want an easy read pick up any sort of Ian Livingstone or Steve Jackson adventure fighting fantasy books and you'll have a good time next i went on to forever odd which is the second in the odd thomas books now this one was not quite as good as the first book but still very very good i gave it four maybe four and a half stars again it's you know he can see murders that are going to happen and he has the help from uh, spirits who have been killed by these people in the past so you can see how they can write lots and lots of stories around this character without giving away what happens in the end of the last book but he's sort of recovering from what happens at the end of the last book doesn't really want to get involved in another murder mystery case he's not a detective of anything he's he actually works in a um, restaurant anyway he's like a cook in a restaurant anyway and he just wants an easy simple life he want he doesn't care about money he just wants enough money to get by and for people to leave him alone basically but he gets wrapped up in this up uh, this other unsolved murder case and he's the only one who can sort of trace down who this killer is and it's quite interesting he has to like find this person by traveling into i think it's like the nevada desert to some old casino rundown casino and it gets really good when he gets to the casino and he meets up with this, um, I can't remember her name now, but the big baddie in this is um, a woman who's quite like sadistic and um, likes killing people, obviously. But she has like these men who would do anything for her because um, she c controls them. It gets really good near the end and he's like having to protect this um, a son of his best friend, which was the only bit I didn't really like because his best friend doesn't get mentioned in the first book but all of a sudden his best friend's son is in this book and he has to protect him but that anyway but um yeah it's a really good story well worth a read and uh, again frankenstein and odd thomas i would highly recommend and now to round off july i read one more stephen king book which is a really thin one and it's called gwendy's button box and it was written with Richard Chismar um, so he did this with another author and you can really tell that it's not just a Stephen King book to me this feels like Stephen King came up with a really sort of interesting idea for a story got sort of halfway through it and then probably thought no this isn't going to go anywhere and then I think this guy must have either convinced him or he approached him and said you know we can finish this story off because it just the beginning starts off really well quite interesting this girl she gets a, a box with different colored buttons on the top and she's told not to press the buttons because they do different things and then also there's every day you can take a silver coin out of the box which is worth a lot of money and also there's like a little chocolate which comes out which makes uh, what does it do like makes you like lucky or something um so it's all it's, all, it's a bit weird but then it gets to the end of the story and it doesn't explain what any of these buttons do or why you shouldn't be push, pushing these buttons. So it's just sort of like, okay, what was the whole point of this box, this button box and what are the buttons for? It starts off well, doesn't end well. I gave it three out of five just because it was an interesting idea and it's quite a short, concise story. I just really didn't like the end. So in August, I read a new author called James Patterson, Along Came a Spider. Now he's a very famous writer. A lot of people sort of diss this writer, saying that he writes too many books and he just churns them out and he's just sort of like 
all he's interested in is in making money out of his stories, which I think is a bit of a weird thing to say about somebody. It's like, why are you making money out of the work you do? It's not okay. But anyway, so I thought this is the first book he published. Along came a spider. I think this was made into a movie because I recognise the name of it. But I thought it was quite good. I gave it three out of five stars. It's a detective story. Uh, what is his name? It's Alex Cross. I think he turns up in a lot of other books he's written. But it's just this guy who he gets put on sort of homicide cases and he has to solve it. So he's trying to solve the case of this uh, child who's uh, from a really rich family who gets abducted uh, along with some other child. And one of the bodies turns up but the other one doesn't and he's trying to track down where this person's gone basically and then there's a twist in it which was really really obvious about three quarters of the way through the book and I sort of think that ruined the story a bit uh, it's all to do with his love interest I won't go into it any more than that but it's just like uh, okay it's maybe it's I was gonna say it's been done so many times but maybe this person did it first so it was pretty good it's well written and I will be reading some more of his books in the future now next I started reading a book by Richard Lehman called the woods are dark now I've got a few of his books and I really like the covers on these uh, before I read it I looked at a few videos and people were saying he's very sort of um, extreme in his writing and I've read a couple of his books, this one and another one, and I would agree his ex his writing is very sort of over the top violent and very sort of, um, there's a lot of sort of sexual abuse. And that's, I think that's the only thing that sort of ruins the book. I know a lot of horror writers put sort of people being sexually attacked and stuff like that, but he just goes way over the top. And for some reason, in both the books I've read, the person who gets attacked then the next guy she comes across she falls in love with and it's just like right so this person who's been attacked violently next thing she's falling in love with some other person so it's a bit weird anyway so the story was really cool it's a bit like a B movie story it's a family who turn up into a town in like a like an RV vehicle and the town are they're full of sort of weirdos it's a bit of sort of like hills have eyes type thing they capture the family and then they take them out to these woods tie them to the trees naked and then leave them to these like human things which live in the woods who come along and take them uh, but then it's about somebody in the town who comes who falls in love with this one girl who's with the family and comes out to try and rescue her and then they it goes really off the wall they go to like this hut in the middle of the woods which is surrounded by heads on poles and they have to fight off these weird things and then <laughs> there's some sort of monster in the ground which they feed people to so yeah it goes a bit off the wall and crazy but again I quite uh, liked it even though this the writing is a bit um, bit crappy uh, so I gave it a three out of five stars and I will be reading some more of his stuff it's just like easy horrible horror so we went back to the Frankenstein series with Dean Koontz and it's called Dead and Alive. Now I actually like the cover to this one. Finally did a good cover to one of his books. Again this one it follows on from the other two books but it sort of goes a bit sort of fantasy rather than the other ones although they're fantasy books it's grounded in reality whereas this one it sort of goes a bit more crazy from here on in. Uh, the creatures they've got sort of like superpowers um, and you know they can heal themselves the main Frankenstein monster called it's like Deuce Leon or something his name is he can actually jump through space time and appear in other places he figured out how to bend reality basically and jump around not quite as good as the other ones I give it sort of three three and a half stars I will read I think there's two more two or three more I need to read and I'll definitely read them because I'm invested in this story now and I want to see what happens uh, but the first two books are a lot better uh, but I still would recommend reading the third one to finish off August I read another Richard Lehman book to see if it was uh, in the same vein as the last one and it pretty much is but this one is even more extreme than the last one this one's called Beware and as you can see from the cover it's uh, naked people dancing around a fire and this one is about an invisible man 
basically and it's all to do with this cult as well again it's like real crazy b-movie type stuff and it gets very sort of even more sexual <laughs> assaults and stuff going on in this one there's one girl she gets attacked four or five times in the book like throughout the whole book it's just like after the second time we just like right yeah i think we sort of know what's going on here can you you don't need to explain how she gets attacked again and again and again i think the writer just gets off on it i think he's a bit of a weirdo but again there's something about this story which keeps you reading it's like <laughs> it's a it sounds weird it's a page turner i'll probably read some more of his books because they're just crappy horror stories really and they're just quite funny quite nuts and yeah so it's a, it's a i don't even know what to say it's an invisible man killing and attacking people <laughs> i gave it a two out of five and even though i think it's not very good i'll be reading some more so we're in up to september i hope you're still watching this um this is a book by virginia andrews it's called flowers in the attic now virginia andrews only wrote about five books in her career and then she um, got quite ill and then she died since she died she's actually brought out another sort of like 20 30 books <laughs> which is weird but the reason being is the last book that she wrote she had help from another author to finish the book off because she wasn't very well and he helped her finish that book off but then when she died he continued to write under her name Virginia Andrews and to bring out more and more books so those books are really written by him under her name which is weird but anyway this book I really enjoyed it it's I gave it four out of five stars a lot of people don't like this book because they concentrate on they say it's like an incest book but although the brother and the sister do sort of get a relationship in it it's not all about that it's about a it's about three children and they live with their mum and dad and her mum comes from a rich background and comes from a big house but she marries um, a guy which the family don't agree with and the dad dies basically and the mum hasn't got any money so she has to go groveling back to her rich mum and dad um, who live in this big mansion and they don't like the children what they do is they lock the children up in the attic and until her sick dad dies and then they say they didn't come back down and apparently her dad hasn't got long left before he dies so she tells the children it's only going to be for like a couple of weeks maybe a month or two and then you'll be able to come back down and everything will be fine but they end up being up there for oh, I can't remember now, it's like three years or something crazy and it's about what happens to these children who are locked away in this attic and I found it really interesting um, really good idea and uh, the reason they sort of have a relationship with each other it's more because they are locked away from everyone else and um, the two older older children oh sorry there's four children the two older children obviously are going through puberty and that sort of thing and they just need love from each other it's not like a sexual thing um, they just sort of grow to love each other and and then you've got the two little children who start getting really ill mentally and physically and how they're trying to cope with living in this attic and I thought it was a really good really good story I'd like to read the other ones I'm not sure if they join on to this or if they're completely different I think they do join on so yeah I'll be reading another one of these ones and then the second book I read in September was a Stephen King book called The Colorado Kid now this was a book he wrote for the hard case crime novel books so it's a series of books which came out from all different types of um, novelists and Stephen King agreed to do a book for them it's a, it's a very short book there's not much to it and I didn't really like it. it I gave it two out of five stars it's about these two old guys who work in a local newspaper talking to a girl who's trying to be an up-and-coming journalist and they say there was this case on their island where they where the papers being produced about this guy called the Colorado kid and how he was found dead on a beach and then all the way through the book they're basically saying 
nobody ever solved this crime and this is why and then they like go into the whole story about this guy being found on the beach and how there was no sort of way to find out why he died and then all these weird things that happened to him and then it sort of just gets to the end and you don't find out what happened to him and it's just like okay what what was the point of that story i know it says from the start you don't know what happens but it's like well so you're telling me nothing's going to happen then you do the whole story and then nothing happens it's like it doesn't really go anywhere there's no real point to the story so again i think it's probably a book Stephen king was writing and then couldn't think of a good ending for it and then he just thought right you can have that <laughs> you can put that in your hard case series of books and uh release it as a novel so yeah not one of his best so we're through to october so it was getting to spooky season so i thought we would do guess what another stephen king book i know you're probably getting sick of these but salem's lot again another early book of his i think it might have even been his second novel that he ever bought out and you could tell the story isn't that great and it's all about vampires who rock up in this town called jerusalem's lot there's this one vampire who basically starts converting other people in the town into vampires and they start killing people and for me it doesn't feel like a Stephen King book Stephen King is very good at sort of taking a new idea and uh, something you've not seen before and running with it whereas this felt like oh he's just gonna do another vampire story and there's a lot of characters in this book which you can see he took out of this story and put into some of his later stories because I think he must have this must have been sort of like him trying at writing a proper horror story after he wrote Carrie and I think there's a lot of characters in there which he probably thought he could develop further so when I was reading this I was like oh that's very much like a character in this book and that he's very much like a character in that book so I think he must have wrote this one thinking I'm not too happy with this but I like the characters and we'll stick them in some other story I gave that one three out of five uh, not bad pretty average score uh, worth a read but not one of its best there's only two more Stephen King books in this um, <laughs> roundup. Just to let you know, next one is Elevation. Now this is one of his shortest books he ever wrote and it's quite a good one. I gave it four out of five. It's quite concise. There's not, there's still character building in it, but it's more about the town uh, rather than the characters. There's, there's one guy who's basically, he's losing weight day by day no matter what he does his weight just keeps going down and his interaction with a couple of ladies who run a cafe in town who are being sort of discriminated against because they're gay and he like befriends them and then it sort of leads to him being friends with these these people and they get a relationship and then he tells them about him losing weight for some reason they don't really explain why and then eventually he gets so light that he floats away. <laughs> That's why it's called Elevation. It doesn't really explain it, but it doesn't really need to. It's just quite a sweet story about relationships between people who don't really get on for no real reason, but then they learn to, to like each other. This is quite a good book. So November and December left. So in November, I read another Dean Koontz book. I tried to read one which wasn't in part of another series to see what his standalone books are like and this one I hadn't heard anyone talk about this one but it's called 77 Shadow Street and I just like the cover and I like the title and I thought well, I'll give that one a go and it's sort of a book of two halves I gave it a three out of five the first half of this book I probably would have got given it like a four or five star review it was about a house where every so many years a portal opens underneath the house which lets the different times all merge together so the past and the future all come together in this house and the people who live in it it's like a huge mansion converted into different like apartments but the people who live in it see you like weird things it's just like ghosts of the future ghosts of the past walking around and they can interact with them and also there's these weird creatures like climbing on the walls and stuff a bit like hellraiser -y type thing and I was like, oh, this is really good. It's, it's like a proper creepy haunted house mystery. Why is this all happening? And then the second half of the book, they try to explain it too much. It goes on to like basically say that in the future, this person learns how to do AI and nanobots. And these nanobots can go inside people and change them so that they're 
they can like fight off disease and stuff which turns them into these weird creatures which is what these creatures are crawling around but also that's why the times are going backwards and forwards and these things from the future are trying to come back to kill the things in the past it all just goes a bit sort of sci-fi rather than horror so the, the last part of the book not great first part really good overall three out of five stars now the next one i haven't got it with me because um i've lent it to my mum to read and it's uh, beach party by rl stein which is the guy who writes goosebumps and this was a point horror book and these books are for young adults they're sort of horror stories for teenagers and I thought I'll give it a read because I've never read an R.L. Stein book and apparently they were really good and very sort of nostalgic for a lot of people and Beach Party was it's pretty good I gave it a three out of five uh, which is quite good for sort of a, a kid's book and it's very cheesy it's very sort of 90s um, style it's about two girls who go and stay at a beach in her dad's like summer house for vacation and then there's somebody you don't know who it is sort of hunting her down to try and kill her and I think a couple of people get killed uh, the twist at the end is a bit bit crap but um, I was expecting that uh, but the whole sort of thing just felt really sort of nostalgic even though I've never read any of his books it just felt very sort of 90s and it's something you could sort of imagine being on TV as a kid so I'd recommend it and I'm going to start reading some of the Goosebump books now after reading that and some more point horror books uh, so I, I, I enjoyed it now December we've got two more books and then it's finished so December I read a another Dean Coons book this one's called Intensity. Now, the reason I read this is because everyone says this is his best book he's written. Uh, and it apparently it's really crazy. And I agree, it's quite crazy. It is very good. I gave it four out of five stars. Not as good as like his Frankenstein or Odd Thomas, but as a standalone, very good story. It's about a guy who, it's called Intensity because every action he does, he, he feels intense feelings from from it he likes the smell the touch he likes to like feel everything sort of take in everything he, he believes if you breathe in the smell of something you sort of embody what you're breathing in like if you smell the trees you become stronger and stuff like that but he's a psycho killer he creeps into a house kills all the people in the house but there's one person left who's hiding under a bed when he does it and she sort of gets in his camper van as he's escaping to try and get revenge. Then she finds out that this guy's got a, another girl locked up in his basement. So he, she then decides to try and save this girl. She then gets captured by him and she has to escape. And it's, it's quite an intense thing. It's all done in 24 hours as, as well, which I really liked. The fact that like it goes from the night time through the day back to the night time and then what happens at the end. So I'd highly recommend that one, four out of five. And finally, if you stuck with me this far, thank you very much. The last book I read of this year was The Body by Stephen King. Now this is a short story. He wrote a, um, a book called The Four Seasons, which had four short stories in, and this is one of them. This is the book which was based, uh, Stand By Me movie was based on. And I really love Stand By Me. It's one of my favorite films of all time. So I thought I'm gonna read the book, see how it compares. Now this book is very, very similar to the film, and which is a good thing. You know, step by step, it, it's pretty much the film. The, the guy who wrote the screenplay must have stuck to this book very well to, to reproduce it. And I think Stephen King actually said it's, when he watched um, Stand By Me, he was shocked at how close the book was to the, um, to the film. Uh, there's a couple of extra bits in here though, which aren't in the film. So if you really like the film, read the book. There's, it goes into a little bit more depth with um, the main character I think it's Gordy he's a writer again uh, but he goes into more of his sort of short stories which he's written for his friends and he like tells the stories as it goes through his journey to find the body yeah gave it five out of five very very good book so there we go thanks for sticking through this uh, video I know it was really super long but I thought I'd do a long video haven't done one for a while and I've read a lot of books this year. So I hope you liked that. I hope it's inspired you to read some more books. Maybe there's some there you, you might be interested in. Let me know in the comments below if you've uh, read any of those or from hearing what I've said about them, you're interested in reading those and if you're gonna pick them up and give them a go. 
I would say reading is quite a hard thing to get into, but once you get the bug for reading, you really, really enjoy it. You look forward to getting home from work and picking up the book and reading some more of this story. It really does get into that sort of thing. I would much rather read a book than watch sort of Netflix nowadays. Thanks for watching. Please remember to thumb up the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Go over to my other channel to check out my movie uh, reactions and I will hope to see you in another video. Thanks for watching. Take care. Cheers.